TeenSpeak gathered questions from teenagers who have had experience of domestic abuse and asked them to the people who have power to make a difference. Here's what they had to say. Is there somewhere a young person can go if they're being abused at home? There are lots of places where young people can go if they are being a, a, abused at home. They need to tell somebody about the abuse, that's very important. It might be a teacher, it might be another parent, it, it, it might be the police, it could be a number of organisations as well that do fantastic work and give real care and help uh, to, to youngsters who, who are having difficulties. Organisations such as Childline, Refuge, Women's Aid and there are many, many anymore. If I'm too scared to call the police, can I get someone else to do it for me? Yes, you can. Um, and, and quite often that to us sends a really strong message that if not only is something happening but you're so scared that you can't tell us and, and you're too frightened to tell us, then, then we're very, very concerned. Will I, will I get into trouble if I call the police about someone hurting me but the other person says I'm lying? It's not unusual for people who've hurt someone else to then lie and say, no, they did it. Um, and so we're really practised at doing more. I mean, the, the official term is a counter-allegation, but it's basically where we might end up with a situation where someone says one thing and the person that they've said has done it says something else to us. And so we would always look for what you might call supporting information. You know, that might be injuries, that might be other witnesses, because we want to get to the truth of what's happened. Um, you know, it's it's... It's really not very nice for someone to be falsely accused, but also we know that lots of people who are accused, the first thing they'll do is, is make an allegation that actually they didn't do it or it's their word against ours. And, and so we, we work really hard to get to the truth. What if someone's parents have said that the police will only make their life worse if they contact them and talk to them about stuff that's happening at home? Is this true? We recognise that someone who abuses may manipulate and, and cause fear, you know, it's, it's not uncommon for people who abuse to persuade others that actually there's, there's a lot of fear associated with reporting and involving other people. Um, and, and people rightly have that fear because they think about how will it affect my family, how will it affect those people I care about and, and what would happen to me. But oh, I think it's really important that we reassure people that actually if you're a victim of abuse then we want to work with you and do what's right for you. Some people may be too scared to call the police when things are bad at home because they think they'll be put into foster care. Is this always the case? It's certainly not always the case. Um, certainly, if, if we have concerns about children, then we, the police, don't make those decisions alone. We, we have a, a lawful obligation, but actually it's really important. It's not just about the law, it's really important we speak with social workers, with other people who might be involved in supporting that child, whether that's education, whether that's, you know, if they had health workers. Um, and we would have what we call a, a, a strategy meeting or a discussion with others to say what's right for that child. Well, it depends how bad things are at home. It may be removal to foster care is what needs to happen if the child is at risk, and it may be that we can work with the situation and make it better. What will the police do if they're called round to someone's place because they've been called for domestic abuse? If we're called to somebody's place and, and we believe that there's been domestic abuse, if somebody tells us that's happened, then the first thing we want to do as any police officer is make sure that people are okay, that nobody's been hurt, that um, people aren't scared, and to, to find out what's happened and to listen to people and understand. Or would they only talk to adults in the house or would they also talk to the kids? Well, that would depend. Um, quite often you might go to something that happens late at night and there might be very young children um, and they may be in bed. It's really important and we always make sure that we, that we encourage officers and train officers to check on the welfare of children. But if, if you've got very young children who are asleep in bed, you know, toddlers, you're going to distress them if you wake them up at night. So actually we might make a judgement. We might speak to people like social services and others to reassure ourselves that those children are safe. If there are children who are older and we think those children can tell us something about what's happened or we think it's important we understand whether they're scared or whether they've been hurt, then we would, we would speak to them. And if, if a lot of things happened at home and you called the police frequently, could you get in trouble for that? No, absolutely not. No, if you're phoning us about something that's happening, then, then no, you won't be in trouble. We, we want to know and we, 
because we understand that actually the more people call us the higher the risk is we have systems in the police like if you call your call is logged and the more you call we know the greater the risk what if someone's had a bad experience with the police what can you offer them I think we, we have a complaint system. I can understand why people may think that it, it's not, um, you know, not as independent as they'd like, but there's the Independent Police Com Complaints Commission who are really keen to understand when people have a complaint. So please make a complaint. Make a complaint to the police as well. If you say, well, I don't want it to be that serious, our first um, option is always to look at actually can we speak to the officers concerned and can we speak to you about how you know it may be that they come and see you and apologize it may be that if you've had a bad experience and we've done things with others that have not worked for you then we want to hear another thing they could go, do is go to another police station and say I've had a really bad experience can I speak to somebody senior about that experience and a senior officer I believe will take them seriously. How can someone feel safe after they've reported domestic violence? Well, there's a very wide range of laws available to help someone who's reported domestic violence. There's also a huge range of excellent support organisations available to help, like Women's Aid, Refuge, also Childline, Victim Support, Citizens Advice Bureau. And also the police are very, very helpful uh, indeed. And although it, it's hard and it might take great courage, uh, to, to, to report that this type of behaviour is happening. That's absolutely the right thing to do. You need to tell someone because that's the only way usually that you can make the bad behaviour stop. And that bad behaviour, violence against anyone, is never, ever, ever acceptable. My advice would be um, make sure people don't stop listening. Make sure that you talk to organisations that can and will support you, like Women's Aid and elsewhere. Um, I know it's really tough, but to be strong enough to walk away from the abusive situation, to close the Facebook access to people who are going to hurt you, to try to resist Ask FM and other sites that will continue to try to hurt you, and to rely on the friends that you really can trust and the family members that you really can trust to make sure that you've got a circle of support around you. You can't do it on your own.